If I have too austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends. For I have given you here a third of my own life, or that for which I live, who once again I tender to thy hand. All thy vexations were but my trials of thy love, and thou hast strangely stood the test here, afore heaven. I ratify this my rich gift, O Ferdinand. Do not smile at me that I boast her off, for thou shalt find that she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it, against an oracle. Then, as my gift and thine own acquisition, worthily purchased, take my daughter. But if thou dost break her virgin knot before all sanctimonious ceremonies, may with full and holy right be ministered, no sweet aspiration shall the heaven let fall to make this contract grow. But barren hate, sour-eyed disdain and discord, shall bestrew the union of your bed with weeds so loathly that you shall hate it both. Therefore take heed, as Hymen's lamps shall light you, as I hope for quiet days, fair issue, and long life, with such love as tis now, the murkiest din, the most opportune place, the strong suggestion our worst genius can, shall never melt mine honor into lust, to take away the edge of that day's celebration, when I shall think Phoebus steeds are foundered, or night kept chained below. Fairly spoke, sit then and talk with her. She is thine own. What, Ariel? My industrious servant, Ariel! Well, would my put it, master? Here I am! Thou and thy meaner fellows, your last service did worthily perform, and I must use you in such another trick. Go, bring the rabble, or whom I give thee power, here to this place. Incite them to quick motion, for I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art. It is my promise, and they expect it from me. Presently? Aye, with a twink! Um, uh, before you say come and go, and, and breathe twice and cry so, so, each one trippingly on his toe, uh, we'll be here with Mop and Moe. But um, do you love me, master? No? Dearly, my delicate Ariel. Oh, do not approach till thou dost hear me call. Well, uh, I conceive. Look, thou, be true. Do not give dalliance too much the rain. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire and the blood. Be more abstemious, or else good night your vow. I warrant you, sir. The white, cold, virgin snow on my heart abates the ardor of my liver. Well, now come, Ariel, and bring a corollary rather than want a spirit. Appear and partly. All eyes, no tongue, be silent. Ceres, most bounteous lady. Thy rich lees of wheat, rye, barley, vetches, oats, and peas. Thy turfy mountains where nibbling sheep and flat meads thatched with stover them to keep. Thy banks with pionid and twilled brims, which spongy April at thy hess betrims to make cold nymphs chaste crowns. And thy broom groves, whose shadows the dismissed bachelor loves being last lord. <laughs> Thy pole clipped vineyard, and thy sea march, sterile and rocky hard, where thou thyself dost err. Queen o oh, the sky, whose watery arch and messenger am I. Bids thee leave these, and to her sovereign grace, here on this grassy plot in this very place, to come and sport her peacocks fly amain. Approach, rich Ceres, her to entertain. Pale, many-colored messenger that ne'er dost disobey the wife of Jupiter, who with thy saffron wings upon my flowers diffusest honey drops, refreshing showers, and with each end of thy blue bow dost crown my bosky acres and my unshrugged down, rich scarf to my proud earth. Why hath thy queen summoned me hither to this short grass green? A contract of true love to celebrate and some donation freely to a state on the blessed lovers. Tell me, heavenly bow, if Venus or her son, as thou dost know, now attend the queen? 
Since they did plot the means that dusky dies my daughter got, her and her blind boy's scandaled company I have forsworn. Mm. Sweet now silence. Juno and Ceres whisper seriously. There's something else to do. Hush and be mute, or else our spell is marred. You nymphs called naiads of the wandering brooks, with your sedge crowns and ever harmless looks, leave your crisp channels and on this green land answer your summons. Juno does command. Come, temperate nymphs, and help to celebrate a contract of true love, be not too late. You sunburned sicklemen of August weary, come hither from the furrow and be merry. Make holiday, your rye straw hats put on, and these fresh nymphs encounter everyone in country footing. I had forgot! The foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The minute of their plot is almost come. Well done! Avoid! No more! This is strange. Your father's in some passion that works him strongly. Never till this day saw I him touch. With anger. So distempered! You do look, my son, in a moved sort, as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels now are ended. These, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the basest fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, ye all, which it inherit, shall dissolve. And like this, in substantial pageant fainted, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on. Our little life is rounded with a sleep. 
answer, I am vexed. Bear with my weakness, my brain is troubled. Be not disturbed with my infirmity. If you are pleased, retire into my cell and there repose. A turn or two I'll walk, still my beating mind. We wish, we wish your, your peace. peace. Come with a thought. I think the aerial come, thy thoughts I cleave to. What's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. I, my commander, when I presented Ceres, I thought to have told you of it, but I feared lest I might anger. Say again, where did you leave these farlets? I told you, sir, they were red hot with drink. A so full of valor, they smote the air and breathing, breathing in their faces, beat the ground, beat the ground kissing, kissing their of their feet, feet yet always, always bending towards, towards their project. project. Then I beat my tabor, and which, like unbacked colts, they pricked their ears, and thought their eyelids lifted up their noses as they smelt music. So I charmed their ears that cough like they my lowing followed through toothed briars, sharp furs, pricking gots and thorns, which entered their frail shins. At last I left them, I left them in the filthy, filthy mantle pool, pool beyond your cell. cell. There, dancing up to the shins of the foul, foul lake, oh, stung their feet. feet. This was well done, my bird. Thy shape invisible retain thou still. The trumper in my house, go bring it hither, for stale to catch these thieves. I go, I go, I go. I go. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature nurture can never stick, on whom my pains humanely taken all, all lost, quite lost. And as with age his body uglier grows, and so his mind cankers, <laughs> I will plague them all, even to roaring. Oh, come, hang them on this line. Pray you tread softly that the blind mole may not hear a footfall. We now are near his cell. Monster, you fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than played the jack with us. Monster, oh, I do smell all horse piss, at which my nose is in great indignation. So is mine. Do you hear, monster? If I should take a displeasure against you, look you, thou wert but a lost monster. Good, my lord, give me thy favour still. Be patient for the prize I'll bring thee to. Shall hoodwink this mischance therefore? Speak softly, all's hushed as midnight yet. Aye. But to lose our bottles in the pool? There's not only disgrace and dishonour in that monster, but an infinite loss. There's more to me than my wetting. Yet this is your armless fairy, monster. I'll fetch off my bottle, though I'll be overraised for my labour. Privy, my king, be quiet. Seest thou here? This is the mouth or the cell. No noise and enter. Do that good mischief which may make this island thine own for ever, and I, thy caravan, for I thy foot liquor. Give me thy hand. I begin to have bloody thoughts. <laughs> <gasps> oh, King Stefano! Oh, peer! Oh. Oh, worthy Stefano, come see what a wardrobe is laid out for thee. Let it alone, thou fool, it is but trash. Oh, oh monster, we know what belongs of frippery. Oh, King Stefano. Put off that gown, Trinculo. By this hand, I'll have that gown. Thy grace shall have it. The dropsy drown this fall eye. What do you mean to dote thus on such luggage? Let's alone and do the murder first. If he awake, from toe to crown, he'll fill our skins with pinches, make us strange stuff. Be you quiet, monster. Mistress Lion, is not this my jerkin? Now is the jerkin under the line. Now jerkin, 
you are like to lose your hair and prove a bald jerkin. Do, do, we steal by line and level, ain't like your grace. I thank thee for the jest, here's a garment for it, which shall not go unrewarded while I am king of this country. Steal by line and level is an excellent pass of pate. There's another garment for it. Monster, come, put some lime upon your fingers and away with the rest. I will have none on't. We shall lose our time and all be turned to barnacles or to apes with foreheads villainous low. Monster, lay to your fingers. Help to bear this away where my hogshead of wine is or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go to, carry this. Aye, and this, and this. <laughs> hey, Mountain, hey! Silver, there it goes, silver. Fury, fury, there! Tyrant, there! Hark, hark! <laughs> Go, charge my goblins that they grind their joints with dry convulsions, shorten up their sinews. With aged cramps and more pinch spotted, make them then pod or kettle mountain. Hark, they roar. Let them be hunted soundly. At this hour, lie at my mercy all mine enemies. Shortly shall all my wavers end, and thou shalt have the air at freedom. For a little, follow and do me service. 